And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. You should always know that I'm looking for good space games, and anytime a space game comes out, uh, I'm interested. This one is Ad Astra, and designed by Bruno Peduti and Serge Lezette. I really like those designers. I really like the company, Nexus, or Fantasy Flight, the one who brought it to America, and so I really looked forward to trying it out. As it is, it's not a bad game. I had fun enjoying playing it, uh, but I think it's a little too long for what it is. If there was some way to shorten it, maybe make it shorter, I think it'd be more fun. It almost feels like a sort of Settlers of Catan in space. Yes, I know we already have Starfarers of Catan, but this is a little bit different. Uh, if you're looking for space battles and action scenes, you're really not going to find it there, but there is some pretty neat pieces. Let's look at them. Here are all the planets included in the game. Each planet, well, we're looking at them upside down. Each planet produces a resource. So you can see this planet here produces energy, while this planet here produces one of the three different metals included in the game. Uh, we call it gold because that's what it looks like. This planet produces water, uh, something that is very important for different things. This is an alien planet. Produces nothing, but has extra points at the end of the game. At the beginning of the game, you're going to put these planets around different systems and set up a board to play. So you can see at the beginning of the game that you have the different planets systems set around the board and you can put three to six planets around them, but you have in the beginning you have the sun which is dying. Time to leave! Each player gets one planet around the sun and they have a little uh, base put on that planet and they each start with a spaceship that's flying in deep space. You get a whole pile of plastic pieces that you'll be able to use over the course of the game and what players are going to be doing again is they're trying to collect these resources up here and uh, these will help them get points. We have the food, water, energy, and then three different kinds of metals that are found in the game. This is the main board that players will be using. At the top, they're keeping track of their victory points, and down here, they're going to be putting down a series of action cards. Uh, each player has a set of cards that correspond with their race, and on the back, there's different actions that they can take. They'll be placing one of these action cards down on the board, and they can put it basically in any empty number space that they want. The cards will then be resolved in order, and basically it works as in the person who played the... Everybody gets to take the action on the card, but the person who played the card uh, gets to go first, and they may get some kind of bonus. So let's take a look at each of these cards. The first card is the production card. Now, interestingly enough, each production card that players have, and they have... They have multiple cards that they can play. It shows two resources. So anybody who has a planet with those two resources is going to produce. The person who played the card is the person who picks which planets produce from those cards. Any planet that has a colony, colonies have look like little um, pyramids. Uh, this must be Stargate. Uh, produces a resource for the planet that that's on. Players can upgrade colonies into factories, which is what you start with at the beginning of the game on one of the planets, which gives you two resources. If you happen to have your spaceship on a planet, it gives you an extra resource. And so you pick, for example, water, and then I, if I have water planets, I'll get resources. And any other players who have controlling things on water planets will also get resources. So that's what you'll find happening a lot of designs, because that's how players accumulate resources. Another thing that players can play then, and this is going to be very similar to, uh, I would guess, uh, Settlers of Catan, is trade. They can play a trading card, and they can then trade with other players. You can only trade with the person, though, who is the person who played that card. Then there's movement. Now, movement's very interesting. Movement shows at the bottom of each movement card two different kinds of planets that that player can move to. Each system has a symbol at the bottom, and if it matches that, a player can move their spaceship to that planet. Or they can move a spaceship from a planet up into deep space. Uh, or they can move their planet directly from one planet to another planet, but then they have to pay energy. And there's different ways to move the spaceships, and energy, the resource, is used to help move these spaceships around other planets. When you get to another planet, you can look at all the planets in a system, and then you decide to land on one, and hopefully later on you can build a colony on it and get resources from it. Alien planets aren't worth nearly as much resource-wise, 
but you can put colonies on them later on to get points and if you're the first person to land on an alien planet you get a special alien bonus card and some of those bonus cards are very very powerful then there is the build card now this card uh, has you'll be using there's a, a chart that all the players have that shows what they can use and you're basically using your resources to build. You'll see to build a colony you need food, water, and one of the three metals. To, build, to upgrade a colony to a factory you need all three metals. To build a terraformer and a terraforming planet uh, can only be built on a water or a grain planet but you need two grain and two water. To build a new starship, three different metals plus a fourth metal, one of the three, and then it shows how you move a starship at the bottom. And those are your different costs. And so players can build those on their turn, starting with the player who is the person who put the card down. Now, the, the other two cards, and I already mentioned movement cards, the other three cards that are still in the deck are all victory point cards. When you play these cards down, everybody will gain victory points for one of the two things that it mentions on the card. So you can pick. So for example, the card that you see showing there right now, you can pick either starships you get two points for every starship that you have in play and then the person who has the most starships gets a three point bonus or if you pick the other one you get one point for every colony you have in play and two points for every factory and the person who has the most points because of that gets a three point bonus so you want to play these cards when you get a bonus but unlike the other cards which you will get back at the end of a turn when you play one of these cards it's gone until you've played all three of your points cards and then you'll get those back the game ends when the last planet is turned over and, and discovered, or, and this is more likely, when one of the players reaches 50 points on the, the point track. At that point, final points are calculated up. Uh, if there is any final points, maybe from special cards, but most of the points will have been gained from those victory point cards. And I forgot to mention, victory point cards are also important to play because they change turn order until that point turn order does not change. And so there's a lot of different interesting facts. You're playing cards, putting them down, doing the different things on them, playing them in order. Once all the cards are played through, putting them all down again and doing the same thing, going out, exploring, trading, building, exploring, trading, building. Please don't understand me to say that Ad Astra is a bad game because it's not. It really has some tactical choices in it. You play your cards down in the order. You're trying to outguess what your opponents have played. Uh, there certainly, though, is nothing new in this game. It's in space. It has a lot of elements from Settlers. It has a lot of elements from worker placement games that are more common these days. Uh, but the space theme is nice. I like the space. I like the components. They are absolutely fantastic. The artwork is tremendous. Uh, just the package put together is a good game. I'm just not sure that it's a great game. I'm certainly glad that Nexus is doing this designer series, uh, promoting different designers and the games that they do, and both of these men have done some fantastic games. I think this one is not okay. I think it ranks as a good game, but nothing more than that. However, if you like Settlers of Catan a lot, and you're looking for something a little bit more than that in the space genre. This is probably maybe a little bit better of a game than Starfarers of Catan, although maybe not as enjoyable, uh, but it certainly has a lot of tactical today. play Audio in it. And so you and may video want to get it for well those purposes. As well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.